Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Niedermeyer. I am a member of Dr. Sophia Cathario's laboratory at North Carolina State University. And today I'm here at IAFP to discuss some of our research concerning the prevalence and characteristics of selected foodborne bacterial pathogens uh, in post-Hurricane Florence floodwaters. So a little bit of background information. Hurricane Florence struck the coast of North Carolina on late September or mid-September of last year, on September 14, 2018. Uh, it caused 17 fatalities, an estimated $44 billion in economic losses and damages uh, all along the East Coast, and caused catastrophic uh, flooding throughout the eastern part of North Carolina. Uh, it actually set a single storm precipitation event uh, record with approximately 30 inches of rainfall in the single storm. Um, now, this is an area that is highly dense in poultry and livestock production. So together with a team of researchers from North Carolina State University as well as UNC, uh, we put together a multidisciplinary approach in order to examine the effect that this large event, large weather event, had on the eastern part of the state. Um, we did everything from microbial source tracking and non-target analysis, geomapping, to the pathogen portion that I'll be talking to you about today. So, 88 stream, floodplain, and ephemeral water bodies <clears throat> were sampled to assess the impact that the storm had on the prevalence of, of selected pathogens. So, the first pathogen we were looking for was Listeria monocytogenes. Now, it's a facultative intercellular, inter, intercellular pathogen, uh, and it is actually one of the top five agents causing death annually uh, among foodborne illness-related um, cases. Uh, it is also ubiquitously found in nature. Uh, so it's been isolated from everything from uh, water and soil to wildlife uh, and e even seafood. So it, it's very ubiquitously found. Uh, the next two are specifically related to poultry. As I said, it's an it's a area highly dense in poultry production. So we were interested in Campylobacter and Salmonella. Uh, Campylobacter, specifically, we're looking for jejuni and coli. Uh, they are obligated microaerophiles. Uh, they frequently colonize poultry and swine. And they are the leading cause of human gastroenteritis. Uh, Salmonella is a foodborne pathogen. It causes about 1.2 million illnesses a year, 450 deaths annually. Uh, and again, is frequently, colonized, or frequently found colonizing poultry. Uh, a fourth path pathogen, or emerging pathogen, uh, that we were not expecting to see, um, or that we were not looking for, uh, was Archibacter bacilli. Now, this is a member of Campylobacter ACA family, uh, an emerging pathogen associated with gastrointestinal infections, uh, and it's been isolated from environmental samples like water, as well as livestock and retail meat products, uh, as well as poultry products. So, moving on. Uh, I'll explain a little bit about how we did this study. So water samples were collected from three uh, watersheds in North Carolina uh, during two sampling phases. Uh, the first sampling phase occurred uh, in mid to late September, uh, September 21st and 22nd, and 27th and 28th. Uh, now, we would have liked to get a little bit closer to the, the actual impact date for the hurricane, Unfortunately, the flooding was so severe that it closed many of the major roadways in eastern North Carolina. So we got a team out as soon as we could, um, but we were able to get about a week out. Uh, the next sampling phase was about a month after the, the, the storm occurred on October 18th and 19th. So, as I said, 88, stream, 88 water samples were collected, and they were analyzed for these, the prevalence of these pathogens. Uh, now, the way we did that, was that we selectively enriched uh, for each pathogen of interest. Now, each one of these uh, organisms has a different enrichment protocol. So for example, uh, in Listeria monocytogenesis case, um, we used a dual stage enrichment process using Fraser enrichment broth and then plated on a selective auger medium uh, called modified Oxford medium. Uh, now that's just one example of what we did. Um, Campylobacter, we used Bolton broth and MCCDA. And then salmonella, we used um, uh, buffered peptone water as a primary enrichment starter, or a pre-enrichment step, and then uh, RV, and then plated on XLD. Um, so once we identified any positive samples, bacteria isolates were then purified and confirmed, 
and then genotyped via multiplex PCR or multi-locus sequence typing, or MLST, and after which they were frozen at negative 80 degrees Celsius uh, for future analysis. Now, so what did we find? Uh, as you can see from this graph here, uh, Campylobacter, you know, one of those that are closely associated with poultry, and Listeria monocytogenes, um, you know, it's one of those that's ubiquitously found, uh, we expected to be a bit higher, uh, but and that was not the case. We only detected both of those organisms in 1% of samples, or a single sample. Um, the l mono isolate that we, that we uh, isolated from the single sample was a serotype 12A. Uh, it's one of the three serotypes that are commonly associated with human illness. Uh, and the Campylobacter isolate that, that, that we were able to uh, detect uh, was Campylobacter jejuni. Uh, again, the most common cause for human Campylobacterosis. Uh, now, we actually sent the Campylobacter jejuni isolate out for MLST, and it came back with a novel new sequence type. Um, so, moving on past that, Salmonella. Uh, was detected in just 6% of samples. Again, we kind of expected that to be a bit higher with the, the prevalence of uh, the poultry and swine production units there, but that was not the case. Um, Listeria species other than L. mono uh, were detected in about 18% of the samples, uh, a bit higher than L. monocytogenes, uh, but again, Listeria species are ubiquitous in nature, and we, we kind of expected that to even be a bit higher. Um, what we weren't expecting to find, or that we weren't looking for, uh, was this member of the Campylobacteriaceae family, Archibacter bacilli. So this was detected in 72% of samples, uh, stayed roughly similar over both sampling phases, and this was detected through the same methods that we used for, uh, that we were attempting to employ for Campylobacter jejuni and Campylobacter coli um, prevalent assessments. Uh, it's a mem member of the same family, so it tolerates the selective enrichments and selective medium uh, very, very well, and uh, there was a lot of it. So moving down, as you can see here, uh, this is a multi-panel uh, map showing the regional distribution of the sample locations as well as the positive and neg sample types as well and the positive and negative of each type of sample uh, location. So if you look at Listeria and Campylobacter, uh, again, found in 1%, so you only have a single uh, positive or single red, X, red cross here. Uh, other Listeria species, um, a little bit more found in sampling phase two, but they were pretty uniformly distributed uh, across the sampling site. Um, Salmonella, found one in phase one, couple in phase two, uh, again, lower quantities, uh, but they were primarily in the middle to middle southern regions of the sites. Uh, what's interesting, Archibacter, again, detected in 72% of samples, um, and it was widely distributed across the sampling region. However, with the exception of the southeastern region here. We have one or two outliers where we did detect it in those samples, but for the, the vast majority, we're all detected in this uh, more northern and uh, western regions. This, this uh, southeastern region uh, de detected it fairly infrequently. So we got all this Archibacter. What are we going to do with it? Um, well, a collaborator of ours at the USDA ARS uh, agreed to do some of this multi-locus sequence typing for us. So what we wanted to do was get a representative panel of what we actually found. So we tried to take approximately one isolate per positive sample, uh, and we put together a panel of 112 Archibacter bacilli isolates for uh, MLST genotyping. So we also had a few in gray here uh, that we recovered from another local creek, uh, just to see you know, what type of uh, distribution it had, if we saw any of the same STs, uh, that sort of thing. So what we found was that of the 112, the panel of 112 isolates, 91% had new sequence types. Uh, this resulted in a total of 67 new STs uh, that were not previously identified prior. And what we can see here in figure three, this is a minimum spanning tree or MST, illustrating the relationship of our Archibacter bacilli isolates uh, that were isolated from Hurricane Florence in that local creek uh, to all of the other Archibacter isolates 
uh, Archibacter bacteria isolates uh, that were previously MLS typed. So the interesting thing about this is that our isolates from Hurricane Florence are in black, a couple of those local creek are in gray, and they tend to cluster in three main regions on this MST. So this top left cluster tends to group more with isolates of ruminant, previous isolates of ruminant and human origin, ruminant in red, human in white. The middle cluster here tends to group more, mostly by itself. There's a couple poultry in there, but I did want to point out that one of our STs uh, actually matched one of ruminant origin in this middle cluster. Actually, it shared an ST with a previously described isolate. Uh, and then this lower cluster here, where the majority of our isolates were, tended to group more with poultry, uh, swine, and uh, seafood isolate, uh, uh, isolates of those origins. Um, and I did want to point out also we have one isolate that shared an ST with uh, that of swine origins. Um, so I mentioned microbial source tracking at the beginning of this. Uh, and what we're really excited about is the, another lab is doing the microbial source tracking for all the samples that we, were taken. So they're using human and pig markers. So what we're interested in to see is if the samples that mark, that, that hit on human or pig markers uh, correspond to Archibacter isolates that are grouped more closely with, say, human isolates or pig isolates in this, in this tree. Um, so while the three main pathogens that we were looking for were isolated fairly infrequently, um, Archibacter bacilli, an emerging pathogen, um, was repeatedly isolated with great consistency throughout both sampling phases um, through methods intended for Campylobacter. Um, now, why is this important? Um, we're, through this study and through future sampling efforts uh, later in 2019, uh, we are going to work to further elucidate the ecology of these pathogens, which is something that you know, is relatively understudied. They're very uh, well studied in clinical or food processing environments, um, but the ecology, environmental ecology is something that's a little bit, um, a little bit understudied. So we're happy to bring our research into that area and, and contribute to that knowledge, that growing knowledge pool. Um, it also has impacts with um, public health. Uh, so as I said, Archibacter is a, an emerging pathogen. Uh, it can be of concern for uh, any produce production facilities over there, over in the, the region that gets hit hard by weather, weather events like this, um, where you have all this flooding and transfer and carriage of these pathogens to places they wouldn't normally be. Uh, not to mention the fact that people that were directly affected especially the young, old, pregnant, immunocompromised that are going out and uh, trying to rebuild their lives, clean up their houses, um, clear out the flooding, clear out um, saturated pieces of furniture, whatever it is, as well as first responders, are going to be coming in direct contact with, this, uh, with these sources. So it, in order to best serve the public and you know, make educated um, uh, educated assessments about potential risks and sources of these risks, um, and we're really happy to be contributing to, to that growing, ever-expanding knowledge pool. Uh, I'd like to take, take a minute and thank uh, the ILSI North America Food Microbiology Committee, um, the National Science Foundation, and North Carolina State University's Ca um, College of Agriculture and Life Sciences, as well as the Department of Food Bioprocessing and Nutrition Sciences for supporting our efforts, efforts in this work. Thank you.